Could there possibly be an unequivocal mathematical proof that the Torah was given by a supreme being? A scientific proof. A proof that can be objectively examined using mathematics? The answer is yes. Believe it or don't, here it comes. It is well known that each letter in the Hebrew alphabet has a numeric value. For example, Aleph equals 1, Bet equals 2, Gimel equals 3, and so on. What is the connection between the numeric values of ancient Hebrew letters and scientific data of the 21st century? Apparently, words in the Holy Hebrew language convey more information than we thought. What information do we convey when we say simple Hebrew words like Uraean, moon, or Shemesh, sun? Could NASA's scientific data about the size and the mass of these celestial objects be hidden within these words? What about the Hebrew names for colors? May they contain accurate scientific data about wavelengths and wave frequencies related to these names? Is it true that the size of Earth and the fact that it is round can be scientifically concluded from its holy Hebrew name, Eretz? What if the Hebrew names for silver, gold, lead, sulfur, and many others contain recently discovered scientific data about their atomic weights? Is it conceivable that values of orbital angular momentum, mass, and size of all planets in our solar system are hidden within their Hebrew names? Do Hebrew words like or, light, and coal, sound, conceal within their numeric values the speeds of light and sound? Could there possibly be conclusive scientific evidence that the modern cosmological time scale and the time scale of the Genesis creation narrative are compatible after all? Is it even possible to prove such claims using an accurate and conclusive scientific method? Get ready for an adventure. In this movie, the truth is being revealed. And it is incredible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1-1 Earth, the Hebrew name of our planet, contains secrets. The secrets are being revealed. The word Eretz stores accurate scientific data equivalent to today's knowledge of Earth's diameter. And Earth's surface area 
and all the rest of Earth's geometrical and even non-geometrical properties. What about the Hebrew names for Moon, Yareach, and Sun, Shemesh? The secrets are encrypted within these words as well. What is the numeric value of the words? Moon, Yareach in Hebrew. Yud equals 10. Resh equals 200. Het equals 8. 218 in total. Earth, Eretz in Hebrew. Aleph equals 1. Resh equals 200. Sadi equals 90. 291 in total. Sun, Shemesh in Hebrew. Shin equals 300. Mem equals 40. Shin equals 300. 640 in total. What are the current scientifically established sizes of these celestial objects? The Moon's diameter equals 3,475 kilometers with a natural log of 8.1533. Earth's diameter equals 12,756 kilometers with a natural log of 9.4538. The Sun's diameter equals 1,391,000 kilometers with a natural log of 14.1455. Scientific data by NASA. Here is a summary of the data. Log represents the original number in a different format. Natural log uses E as a basis with a constant value of 2.71828. In fact, the number E is the default for log calculations. For example, if you open up your calculator and put the diameter value of the moon, i.e. 3,474.8 kilometers, and click on the IN button on your calculator, the log E diameter value will be presented to you. For more information about log E, go to Wikipedia. It is suffice to say that due to some unique advantages that modeling in terms of log E affords, such mathematical modeling is commonly used by scientists and engineers in all branches of science and technology. Let us examine if the numerical values of the ancient Hebrew words for moon, earth, sun, contain the formula to calculate the diameters of these celestial bodies. How? Using statistical analysis. First, we will mark the log diameter values, one set of data, on the vertical axis Y, and the corresponding Hebrew numerical values, HNV, on the horizontal axis X. We then statistically examine if a linear relationship, a straight line, is formed between the three points produced by the two sets of data. The findings you are about to see are the first among many findings we will present during this movie, and it is all part of the studies and research done by Professor Hayim Shore. Here is a diagram with the diameter data by NASA. Let's examine it together, step by step. The horizontal axis, X, represents the Hebrew numeric value, HNV, of the words. Since the smallest value is 218, Yerech, and the highest value is 640, Shemesh, we start the X axis just before 200 and end it at 700. The vertical axis, Y, represents the celestial object's diameter by NASA. Let us find out what log E stands for in kilometers. Now, let us pinpoint the data on both axes so that we may realize whether the resulting points form a straight line. Where is moon, Yerech in Hebrew, on the x-axis? As we saw earlier, Yerech has a numeric value of 218. And where is the diameter value for the moon on the y-axis? Let's mark the junction point for the moon. Now let's match Earth. 
Eretz has a numeric value 291, as we saw earlier, and Earth's log diameter given by NASA is 9.4538. Now let's match the Sun. Chemish has a numeric value of 640, as we saw earlier, and the Sun's log diameter given by NASA is 14.1455. We will now add the name represented by each point to the diagram. Now, a big question arises. Do these points, synchronized on both axes, match a linear equation? In other words, do the points align about a straight line? If the points are aligned about a straight line, it means that a match exists between HNV and the scientific data. Let's check. The points are almost completely aligned on a straight line. Soon, we will see Professor Shore's calculations of the linear correlation between HNV and the log diameter data and the probability to obtain this finding coincidentally. Later, we will show more examples. What would have happened if one letter was changed? Say that instead of Shemesh, the Torah had the word Zemesh. The numeric value would have changed from 640 to 347. The word Zemesh would appear here. And as you can see, the connection and match to a straight line would be lost because a single letter was changed. What if another letter was different? Say instead of Eretz, we had the word Erish. The word Erish would appear here. As you can see, a single letter change is critical. Two letters leads to chaos. But in reality, the Jewish Torah names are Eretz, Ereach, and Shemesh and the real Torah names match the scientific data by NASA. The Jewish Torah was written over 3,300 years ago. The words Yureich, Eretz, and Shemesh are those commonly used in the Jewish Torah, and their HNV values are calculated in a simple and straightforward manner. Let us understand what we are looking at and ask important questions. Why is it significant to obtain the three points in the plot aligned on a straight line? Namely, obtain a match between the ancient Hebrew numeric values, HNV, also known as Gemetria, and the scientific data? How large is the correlation match obtained between the Hebrew words numerical values, HNV, and the scientific data? Is it possible to calculate the probability of getting such a match by random? Professor Chaim Shore asked these very same questions and explored them mathematically. Quote a Professor Chaim Shore, The fact that two sets of data form points that are aligned on a straight line has a significant meaning on its own. The practical meaning of having two seemingly unrelated sets of data form points aligned on a straight line, as the significant statistical analysis shows, is that the two sets of data are measurements of the same physical attribute. Though this attribute is expressed in the two axes by two different scales, HNV scale and log diameter scale. Using scientific measurements, there are always random deviations in empirical data. Therefore, scientists perform statistical analysis to determine that the two sources that had produced the two sets of data in fact maintain a linear relationship between them. This statistical analysis is termed linear regression. I usually explain the meaning of the straight line by showing an example of two different temperature scales such as Celsius versus Fahrenheit. Of course, a straight line would form. For example, Celsius versus Fahrenheit. As expected, obviously, a straight line is formed. What does it mean? It means that each point represents a single temperature value, only on different scales. Please note, the horizontal scale, Celsius, represents the vertical scale, Fahrenheit, and vice versa. For example, 
100 degrees Fahrenheit equals 37.78 Celsius and 37.78 degrees Celsius equals 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Conclusion: Since Hebrew numerical values HNV and the log diameters of Moon, Earth, Sun form points aligned on a straight line, as the statistical analysis has shown, this means that HNV values represent the log diameters of these celestial objects, only on a different scale, the HNV scale. Quote of Professor Hyam Shore about the correlation between the two scales. The three points, Ureach, Eretz, Shemesh, are aligned almost exactly on a straight line with a linear correlation of 0.999. If the relationship was purely mathematical and not based on empirical observations, we would have obtained a correlation of 1. Quote of Professor Hyam Shor about the probability of obtaining this match by random. When the probability of obtaining certain findings by chance is smaller than 5%, significance level of 5%, we conclude that these findings are statistically significant. Scientists have been using this criterion for many years in all branches of the scientific investigation of nature. Using a statistical methodology based on computer simulation, explained in detail in my book, the probability of obtaining by chance only the finding related to Moon, Earth, Sun is 0.2%. End quote. In other words, a probability of 99.8% that this is not a coincidence, scientific and mathematical proof. Here is the histogram with the simulation results. Quote a Professor Hyam Shore. As explained in my book, only trios of words with slope ratios very near plus one would be considered as having a linear relationship. In reality, we find out via simulation that the slope ratios of trios of words produced randomly may vary from negative 100 to plus 100 and beyond. This means that the probability of a given trio of words produced randomly to have a slope ratio of plus 1 or thereabouts is extremely small, in fact, next to zero." End quote. We have only addressed the diameters thus far. What about the rest of the geometrical parameters, like volume? surface area, etc. Quote a Professor Hyam Shore, Since the diameter is represented by log diameter and a straight line has formed, a linear relationship must also be obtained for any other property of the geometric shape of the celestial objects, like surface area and volume. End quote. Let us quickly examine the match of HNV with log volume and log surface area as they are supposed to match. Here is a plot with the volume data kilometers cubed. The vertical axis Y represents the celestial object's volume by NASA. As always, the horizontal axis X represents the Hebrew numeric value HNV. As you can see, we got a match on a straight line. This time, for the volume of the Moon, Earth, and the Sun. Now let us see the HNV correlation to log surface area as it is also supposed to be aligned, as it is part of the same geometric shape. Here is a plot with the surface area kilometers squared. Once again, as expected, the linear correlation is obtained, this time to the surface area of the celestial objects. It turns out that numeric values of the ancient Hebrew words match actual sizes of the Moon, Earth, and Sun on any conceivable geometrical property of a spherical shape. This is due to the existence of linear correlation of HNV, not with the original diameter data, but with log diameter data, not a self-evident finding, perhaps bordering a miracle. This means we are looking at a scientific and mathematical proof that the source of the Torah knew not only the shape of these celestial objects, namely spheres, but also their sizes. But wait, is it possible that Eretz, 
Earth, Shemesh, Sun, Uraich, Moon, match not only the sizes of these celestial objects, but at the same time, also their mass, using same HNV? Before examining mass versus HNV, let us understand something very important. Mass and size of a set of celestial objects do not have to be perfectly correlated. Obviously, the bigger the object, the larger its mass is expected to be. But objects of the same size can have different masses. For example, take two balls of the same size, one made of lead and another of paper. This means that the masses of the Moon, Earth, and the Sun could have been different without changing their sizes. A match between H and V and the masses of these celestial objects would therefore be very remarkable. The Moon's mass is 7.347673 E plus 22 kilograms. E plus 22 means 10 to the power of 22, with a natural log value of 52.6512. Earth's mass is 5.972190 E plus 24 kilograms, with a natural log value of 57.0491. The Sun's mass is 1.989100 E plus 30 kilograms, with a natural log value of 69.7652. Here is a summary table. HNV correlation with log mass kg. The Hebrew words are the same, Yareach, Eretz, and Shemesh. This time the mass is on the vertical y-axis, and as you can see, the HNV is aligned with the mass of the celestial objects. And once again, the linear correlation, or the match, is very high. How high, you ask? 0.985 correlation, that's 98.5%. While producing this very movie, a new finding was discovered, quote a Professor Chaim Shor. During one of many exchanges of communication with the producers of this movie, while working on the English version, Mr. Oren Evron has informed me that the linear relationship between Hebrew gematria and long diameters of moon, earth, sun, extends to the English words, namely moon, earth, and sun. Using 16th century Agrippa key for English alphabet gematria, Oren has found the English gematria for these words to be 170, 194, and 330, respectively, versus the Hebrew gematria of 218, 291, and 640, respectively. However, the English gematria values were found to be highly correlated with the log diameters of Moon, Earth, and Sun. I was both stunned and excited with the news. It immediately dawned on me that this finding implies that the gematrias for the two trios of Hebrew and English words must be highly linearly correlated. Indeed, a statistical analysis produced a linear correlation of 0.999, as may be learned from the following plot. Values of Hebrew words are read on the horizontal axis, those of English on the vertical axis. HNV versus English numeric value for Moon, Earth, Sun. As you can see, a linear match is formed. The new finding by Oren Evron opens up space for a whole new branch of investigative science yet to be explored. Furthermore, it has far-reaching implications for the validity of the much-researched hypothesis that ancient Biblical Hebrew had been sourced to all current languages and for how these languages actually formed. It is also highly reminiscent of the ancient story of the Tower of Babel, Genesis 11 verses 1 through 9. If this relationship between Hebrew and English gematrias indeed proves not to be singular, then much research is awaiting scientists to be carried out.
end quote. Now, let us ask a big question. Are there further matches between HNV and recently discovered scientific data? The answer is yes. Professor Chaim Shore has examined numerous word groups in the Torah, and the same phenomenon repeats itself over and over again. As we now know, numerical values of Hebrew words for moon, earth, sun, convey the exact size and mass of these celestial objects. But the same Hebrew word, Yereach, moon, has another meaning in Hebrew, though pronounced differently. Yerach also means month. For example, nine Yachei Leda, nine pregnancy months. The Jewish month is a lunar month, namely based on the time it takes for the moon to encircle Earth. This is also why Hebrew for month is written like the Hebrew for moon, though the two words are pronounced differently. Could it be that Yerach stands for the size and mass of the moon, and at the same time, Yerach, having same letters as Yerach, represents the time cycle of the Jewish moon-based month? If it does, it would be an amazing triple-fold correlation. Let us examine Yerach, month, together with two other Hebrew words for time periods, Yom, day, and Shana, year. This will allow us to examine whether this trio of Hebrew words deliver information about the time cycles associated with them. To carry out the study, Professor Chaim Shore had used a common scientific unit for measuring cyclic phenomena, called Hertz, HZ. 1 HZ equals 1 cycle per second. A choice of a different unit would not change the results of the statistical analysis. To demonstrate how time cycles of day, month, year are calculated, suppose that instead of Hertz, we have chosen year as our cycle unit. Then the calculation would look like this. For day, 29.53059 times 12 equals 354.37 cycles per year. For month, 12 cycles per year. For one year, one cycle per year. What is the numeric value of the words? Day, yang, yud equals 10. Vav equals 6. Mem equals 40. 56 in total. Month, yerech, has the same letters and numeric value as yerech. Yud equals 10. Resh equals 200. Chet equals 8. 218 in total. Year, shana, shin, equals 300. Nu equals 50. He equals 5. 355 in total. Let us review the scientific frequency in hertz, cycles per second, for day, month, and year. Day's frequency equals 1.1574e minus 05, with natural log value of minus 11.3667. Month frequency equals 3.9194e minus 07, with natural log value of minus 14.7521. Year frequency equals 3.2661 E minus 08, with natural log value of minus 17.2371. Here is a summary table. Let us now examine whether there is a correlation between the log frequency of day, month, year, and HNV. In other words, do the ancient Hebrew words represented by HNV contain hidden information about the cyclic nature of the time periods? Here is a plot of log frequency versus HNV for day, month, year. Once again, a linear alignment is formed. Where are the words from the Holy Torah? Day, Yom in Hebrew. Month, Yerach in Hebrew. Year, Shana in Hebrew. 
once again, if a single letter was different, there would be no match. For example, if instead of yom, we had rom, the value would change from 56 to 246, and the word rom would appear here, and the linear configuration of the points would be lost. Note, we changed only a single letter, but words could be made of four, five, even six or seven letters. This means that the numerical values are precisely chosen out of a very large number of possibilities. Quote to Professor Hayam Shore about the correlation. The same observed phenomenon we saw earlier repeats itself. The three Hebrew words, Yom, Yerech, Shana, are aligned on a straight line with a linear correlation of negative 0.9992 if the relationship was purely mathematical, namely not based on empirical observations, we would have obtained a correlation of negative 1.0000. Quote a Professor Hayam Shore about the probability to get this finding by chance. Using computer simulation, while randomly selecting letters according to their frequency of appearance in the Hebrew Jewish Bible, I have found the probability of obtaining by chance a linear relationship to be 0.5%, end quote, i.e. 99.5% that this is not a coincidence. Again, we have a scientific proof obtained via a statistically significant result that the match between HNV and the scientific data is not coincidental. Let us be reminded, Uriah, moon, correlates not only with the moon's size and not only with the moon's mass, but also with the time period that the equally spelled word Yerach represents, namely month. Incredible three folds. But wait. Are there further matches such as these? Once again, the answer is yes. Let us dive into deeper waters and examine the ancient Hebrew word for life's most important substance on Earth, water. Much of Earth's water comes from out of space by huge blocks reaching Earth's atmosphere and evaporating. What is so special about water? Almost all life on Earth needs water to survive and thrive. The icebergs melt down, the steamy water from the oceans go across the land, the water goes down and the cycle of life continues. And don't we all just love pure and white snow? The flakes are so soft, beautiful and symmetric. Have you ever seen a regular snowflake under the microscope? Please look closely. Here is a regular snowflake under the microscope. Do you spot a Star of David? Let us check out another snowflake. What is the general shape of this snowflake? Let us have a look once more at yet another snowflake, and we shall find another Star of David. Unlike other materials on planet Earth, which require long times and much energy to move from one state of existence to another, water naturally makes transitions between its three phases of existence all the time. What is the Torah name for water? Mayim. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. Genesis 1 verses 6 and 7. Let us examine the three phases of water, ice, liquid water, and steam. Is it conceivable that ancient Hebrew words for the three phases of water store a hidden mathematical equation for the energy needed to move from one phase of water to another? Let us address the Hebrew words for ice, liquid water, and steam. What is the numeric values of the words? Ice, kerah, has a numeric value of 308 in total. 
water, mayim, has a numeric value of 90 in total, and steam, kitor, has a numeric value of 325 in total. Now let's look at the scientific data, specific heat capacity, or SHC. Ice, Karak, has a specific heat capacity of 2,050 joules to kilogram Kelvin with zero degrees Celsius. Water, Mayim, has a specific heat capacity of 4,181 joules to kilogram Kelvin with 25 degrees Celsius. And steam, Kitor, has a specific heat capacity of 1,970 joules to kilogram Kelvin with 100 degrees Celsius. Scientific data from engineeringtoolbox.com. Here is a summary table of the data. Here is a plot with the specific heat capacity data. This time, the vertical axis represents specific heat capacity. As you can see, a straight line is formed once again. Where is the cross point for the Hebrew names on this straight line? Water, Mayim, Ice, Kerech, Steam, Kitor. And once again, the HNV is almost perfectly aligned with the scientific data. What does this mean? It means that the scientific data regarding the three phases of water are encrypted as intrinsic values in the numerical values of the respective Hebrew words. What is the linear correlation between the scientific data and the HNV? The linear correlation between data on the two scales is 0 0.9995. A purely mathematical relationship would have given a correlation of negative 1.0000. And there are further matches like these? Yes. Let us next examine various substances like pure metals or chemical compounds and see if numerical values of some basic chemical properties are stored within ancient Hebrew names for these substances. What are the Hebrew names that we may find in the Jewish Hebrew Bible? Here are a few examples. Zahaf, gold, kesef. Silver, Opheret, Lead, Bladot, Iron, Gofrit, Sulfur, Gir, Limestone, Neter, Sodium, Sechuchit, Silica, and more. Here is the HNV as it appears in the Jewish Torah text. Here is a summary table for metals and non-metals, HNV and atomic weights. As we may realize, the scientific data and HNV values form points that are aligned on a straight line again. Let us show the Hebrew word represented by each point in the plot. Gold, Zahaf in Hebrew, has a Hebrew numeric value, HNV, of 14. Silver, Kesef in Hebrew, has an HNV of 160. Copper, Nechusha in Hebrew, has an HNV of 363. Iron, Pladot in Hebrew, has an HNV of 514. This time, we are in the realm of atomic weights, comparing the words from ancient Jewish Torah to modern scientific information. And once again, HNV values have very significant linear relationship 
with the scientific data. This time, the correlation is 0.9911. That is a 99.11% match. Let us observe another four-point diagram with atomic weights. Now, we compare HNV values to reciprocal atomic weights of sodium, sulfur, lead, and brass. And once again, a significant linear relationship is in full view. What is the correlation this time? Correlation is negative 0.9915, namely, a match of 99.15%. Let us take a look at yet another four-point diagram. HNV values of limestone, burned lime, silica, and sodium are now compared to the respective values of reciprocal atomic weight. This time, the match is 99.97%. How could a 3,000-year-old text contain such modern scientific information? These discoveries, no doubt, are powerful enough to change how we view our world. How does Professor Shore summarize the results of this study? Quote of Professor Hyam Shore about the chemical substances study from his book. The results of this analysis reveal that the values of the Hebrew names are equivalent to the reciprocal atomic weight of the materials analyzed. Namely, they represent the linearly transformed number of molecules per unit of mass, irrespective of how this unit is defined, or equivalently, up to a change in location and scale, the number of moles per gram. Let us speed up and address speeds. Let us see if the Hebrew words or, light in Hebrew, and kol, sound in Hebrew, represent the speeds of light and sound respectively. The speed of sound is about 1,235 kilometers per hour. Light is moving at the maximum velocity possible. Light travels at a speed of about 300,000 kilometers per second. Let us see Professor Shore's findings about the speeds of light, sound, and no movement at all relative to respective Hebrew words. If sound represents movement, obviously silence should represent rest or a state of zero movement. How extraordinary that in Hebrew, a single word means both silence and zero movement. This Hebrew word is demama derived from the same Hebrew word as domam, meaning silent, but also being in a state of standstill. Here is the numeric value of the words. Light, or in Hebrew, has a numeric value of 207. Sound, kol in Hebrew, has a numeric value of 136. Stillness, demama in Hebrew, has a numeric value of 89. Here is the scientific data in MPS, meters per second. Light, or, equals 299,792,458 MPS. Natural log of 19.52. Sound, coal, equals 343.26 MPS. Natural log of 5.84. Stillness, de mama, equals 0 MPS natural log of zero. A plot with three points representing speed of light, speed of sound, and zero speed. Again, the scientific data is aligned on a straight line. We can probably guess by now which point represents which Torah Hebrew word. De mama, stillness, represents zero speed. Kol, sound, represents the speed of sound. Or, light, represents the speed of light. Question, what is the linear correlation obtained for this analysis? Answer, correlation of 0.9938, a match of 99.38%. And what is the chance to randomly obtain this result? Using computer simulation, Professor Hyam Shore calculated this probability to be 0.769%.
namely a significant result indicating confidence of 99.23% that this is not a coincidence. But wait, is there a natural phenomenon representing all varieties of light humans can see? Yes, the rainbow. Light is what allows us to see. A color is a light wave of specific length and frequency. However, all colors are still light and have the speed of light. Is there a naturally occurring phenomenon that produces sound, occasionally with a sonic boom shock wave and frightening intensity? Yes, thunder. Is it conceivable that Ram, thunder in Hebrew, and Keshet, rainbow in Hebrew, also represent the speed of sound and light, respectively? That would be remarkable. Rainbow, Keshet in Hebrew, has a numeric value of 800. Thunder, Ram in Hebrew, has a numeric value of 310. Stillness, Dimama, has a numeric value of 89, as we saw earlier. A linear correlation is formed once again. Dimama, Ram, Keshet. This time, we have a linear correlation of 0 0.9999. That's a 99.99% .99 match. All of these diagrams give us an objective, scientific, and mathematically validated evidence that modern-day scientific data had been known to the Jewish Torah giver. Since the speed of sound and the speed of light are encrypted in the Hebrew names, do Hebrew names for colors, as clearly specified in the Jewish Hebrew Bible, convey also the respective wavelengths and wave frequencies of these colors? Here is a table of wave frequency and wavelength of the visible colors. Quote to Professor Haim Shur about a color names study. For this study, we have selected four colors with indisputable meanings regarding their biblical Hebrew names. Tzahov means yellow in Hebrew. Yarekon, green. Techelet, blue. Argmon means magenta, i.e. deep purplish red. Here is the HNV value of the words. Yellow, Zahov, 97. Magenta, Argamon, 294. Green, Yarekon, 366. Blue, Techelet, 850. Here is a summary table of wave frequencies, mid-values at HNV. Here is a plot with the HNV of the colors. This time, we compare HNV values to respective light wave frequencies. What is the linear correlation obtained for this part of the study? Linear correlation of 0.9981, which means a match of 99.81%. Please note that Professor Shore had conducted other analyses regarding ancient Hebrew names for colors, all resulting in appreciable linear correlation between HNV values of Hebrew color names and their wave frequencies or wavelengths. A note from the producer of the movie, Mr. Ora Nevron. We made this movie because we love people and want Earth to become a better, more loving place, and people deserve to know the truth, which in turn can help us achieve this goal. Producing this movie has been both intense and enlightening. The studies carried out by Professor Shore are so impressive that we wanted to show everything. However, squeezing the roughly 300 pages of his book into a single movie is not an easy task, more so as we are well aware of the huge importance of the results obtained in these studies. We are proud to be in the position of producing this historical movie, and as you proceed viewing it, you are in for yet another surprise. Results from a study will be shown with an innovative perspective on one of the most debated subjects of our time. The Big Bang Theory, Age of the Cosmos measured in billions of years, versus Genesis Creation Narrative, Six Days.
After addressing earlier Moon, Earth, Sun, we ask ourselves naively, what about the rest of the solar system? Is it possible that values of the angular momentum, mass, and size of every planet in our solar system are also hidden within Hebrew names for these planets? The answer is yes. Let us find out the hidden information residing in the holy Hebrew names of all planets in our solar system. But first, we need to understand how the professor knew which biblical name belongs to which planet. Quote of Professor Chaim Shore about the planet's Hebrew names. It is widely accepted that Eretz is Hebrew for Earth. There are eight more words in the Bible that obviously refer to planets or to known constellations, groups of stars. However, there are two more biblical Hebrew names for planets recognized by both Bible academic researchers and Jewish traditional interpreters. Therefore, out of the list of nine, we have in total three validated names. Sorting in an ascending order two lists, that of the numerical values of the biblical Hebrew names and that of the equatorial diameters, including Pluto, that has recently been deleted from the list of planets. We have encountered an amazing surprise. All three planets with validated names, Eretz, Earth, Shekhar, Jupiter, and Mazar, Venus, occupy the same serial positions in both lists. The chance of this match to happen by random is extremely small. 0.2%. This means that the professor has, to a large extent, validated using statistical calculation of probabilities that the entire list of Hebrew names for celestial objects is a list of names for the planets. We are used to the English names for the planets. What are the names according to Jewish Torah? Mercury, Chima, Venus, Mazar, Earth, Eretz, Mars, Ksil, Jupiter, Shahar, Saturn, Teman, Uranus, Aish, Neptune, Ash, Pluto, Kochav. Let us examine the planet's mass values versus their respective HNV values. Is it even feasible that we find all points formed by the two sets of values, mass and HNV, aligned on a straight line? Let us see a summary table for HNV and the scientific data by NASA. Here is a summary table for our solar system. Log mass versus HNV for all planets in the solar system. Let us see where the Hebrew names are. The statistical analysis shows that all points in the plot are aligned onto the same line. What are the odds? Slim, extremely slim. We will soon see the professor's calculation for the probability of obtaining this alignment by chance. What is the linear correlation between the two sets of data, log mass and HNV? Correlation of 0 0.9776. That is a 97.76% match. This study is indeed revolutionary. If the findings of this study become common knowledge, they may change forever the common perception of the Hebrew Bible and the way humanity looks at the world. Let us next find out if HNV values also correlate with the sizes of the planets. As we saw earlier, objects of same size can have different masses. Therefore, it would be double-fold more stunning 
if a significant correlation is found also for the planet's sizes. Here is a plot of all nine planets' log diameter data by NASA with corresponding HNV values. Again, the points are aligned on a straight line. We conclude that HNV values represent not only the planet's mass, but also their sizes. And what is the linear correlation between the log diameter and HNV? Correlation of 0 0.9825. That is a 98.25% match. But hold on, is it possible that the ancient Hebrew numeric values also match the recently discovered orbital angular momentum? Please note that two planets of particular size and mass can have any orbital speeds, i.e., it does not have to match the size nor the mass of the planets. Again, a straight line is formed. Just sit back and take a look at this miracle. And what is the correlation between HNV values and the natural log of the planet's orbital angular momentum? 0.9812 that is a 98.12% match. A threefold match is found between Hebrew words of the Jewish Torah and data collected in the Space Age. Mass, size, and orbital angular momentum, they all align on a straight line with very large correlations with HNV. What are the odds, you might ask? Quote of Professor Hyam Shore about the probability. Probabilities of obtaining these alignments of the nine points by chance alone, based on linear regression analysis, are log mass versus HNV, 0.0005%, log diameter versus HNV, 0.0002%, log of the planet's orbital angular momentum versus HNV. 0.0003%. We now proceed to address one of the most disputed and debated subjects in history. The scientific cosmological timeline of various events mentioned in the Genesis creation story and the respective timeline of the six days of creation. According to Big Bang Theory, the first to appear in the just created universe is light, also known as electromagnetic radiation. When scientists refer to light left from the Big Bang, they do not mean human visible light. That constitutes just a small fraction of the electromagnetic radiation. Quote from Wikipedia Light Entry. In physics, the term light sometimes refers to electromagnetic radiation of any wavelength, whether visible or not. In this sense, gamma rays, X-rays, microwaves, and radio waves are also light." End quote. According to Big Bang theorists, the beginning of time itself was just about when light started showing up in our universe. Quote from Wikipedia entry, Big Bang, space was contained in a single point from which the universe had popped up and has been expanding ever since. End quote. The obvious major difference between the two timescales, the biblical and the cosmological, is in the time unit used, the biblical day of creation versus the scientific giga year, namely a billion years. What is a day in Genesis if there was yet no earth and no earthly evening and morning? Day in the Torah means more than what most people think. Is it conceivable? that the two timescales, the biblical and the scientific, are coordinated in some sense. How do you even examine such a puzzling conflict between the two timescales? How do you reconcile them? One of the most intriguing studies conducted by Professor Hyam Shore has addressed the relationship between the timescales of Genesis and cosmology. Here is an illustration of how the Big Bang and the cosmological timescale looks like. 
And as in earlier studies, statistics was again summoned to deliver clear-cut answers. Quote of Professor Hyam Shore, to statistically analyze Genesis creation timeline in relation to the timeline offered by cosmology, certain events specified in Genesis, such as the creation of the sun and the moon on the fourth day, were defined on two timescales. One, Genesis timescale in terms of days on the horizontal axis X. Two, the scientific timescale in terms of billions of years since the Big Bang on the vertical axis Y. I have conducted two analyses. One, an analysis of six events mentioned in Genesis for which satisfactory scientific data exist as to when those events occurred. Two, a reduced analysis of four events for which the estimated cosmological timeline is particularly highly reliable. The statistical equation that combines the two timescales based on the second analysis this equation appears in Figure 22.2 of my book, is TS equals negative 2.940 plus 3.0007 TB, where TS is cosmological time in billions of years since the Big Bang and TB is Genesis time in days. The probability of getting this finding by random is 0.01%. In accordance with ancient Jewish tradition, which places an occurrence time of an event with specified time period at the end of that period, the analysis here assumes that all specified events have occurred at the end of the specified day. An exception to this rule is creation of Adam, chapter 2 of Genesis, which is traditionally assigned by oral Torah to have occurred at the end of the 14th hour of the 16th day. See details in section 22.5.1 of my book. The present equation is extraordinary on two counts. From this equation, we deduce that day in Genesis is equivalent to 3.0007 billion years. Note that this value had been obtained automatically from the computer, namely directly from the statistical analysis of data. On a personal note, In all my years of engaging in statistical analysis of empirical data, both within academia and outside, I do not recall ever obtaining a statistical estimate so accurate as to have three zeros after the decimal point. Two, according to the derived equation, the start time of creation, TB equals zero, is 2.940 billion years prior to the Big Bang. This value may well be connected to recent discoveries in the universe of dark matter and dark energy, and it is also consistent with the depiction in the second verse in Genesis. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. Genesis 1-2 This verse implies that after the beginning of creation and before light was created, and God said, Let there be light, Genesis 1-3, there was a period of darkness in our universe. Based on the statistical model, I am offering in my book, section 22.4.3, a scientific prediction that in the near future, cosmologists may reach the conclusion that dark matter and dark energy comprising most of existent matter and energy in the universe have preceded the Big Bang, let there be light, by almost three billion years. Time will tell. Here is a summary of the data. The creation of light, according to scientific data, accrued 13.7 billion years ago, or 0.0003 billion years after the Big Bang started. The creation of the Sun accrued 4.57 billion years ago, 9.13 billion years after the Big Bang. The creation of the Moon accrued 4.53 billion years ago, 9.17 billion years after the Big Bang. The creation of man, according to science, accrued 0.0002 billion years ago, 13.6998 billion years after the Big Bang. One of the findings of Professor Hyam Shore 
comparing the modern cosmological timescale with Genesis timescale. Let us inspect this plot together in order to understand what we are observing. The cosmological timescale is presented by the vertical y-axis in terms of billions of years. The horizontal axis, x, represents Genesis creation days. The alignment is clear. The two scales are linearly correlated. The Big Bang, first appearance of light, formation of the Moon and the Sun. Even though the two events seem to be represented by a single square, we are in fact observing two squares so close together that they are indistinguishable from one another. The first appearance of man on Earth. Let us show cosmological times for each event. Now let's see the events from the Torah point of view. Day 1. God said, Let there be light. Fourth day. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. As you notice, not only is the creation of the moon and the sun on the fourth day, they are also mentioned in the right order of their creation, first the sun and then the moon. Sixth day, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. We have four points aligned on a straight line. Therefore, the vertical y-axis, the scientific cosmological time scale, is linearly correlated with the horizontal x-axis, the time scale of the book of Genesis. How large is the correlation between these two time scales? 0 0.9998. That's a match of 99.98%. And what is the probability of getting this match coincidentally? 0.01%. The numbers speak for themselves, don't they? Finding such a match between the two timescales in the most famous book in the world, written over 3,000 years ago, is by all means a true miracle. Again and again we find out that recently discovered scientific findings match that which is written in the Torah. Quote of Professor Chaim Shor, How could such different timescales, derived from two so different modes of observation upon the world, be yet so compatible with one another? End quote. In conclusion, let us present in a concentrated fashion some of the results obtained by Professor Chaim Shor via computerized simulation. The professor ran a computer simulation where sets of words had been generated with same number of letters as the original Hebrew words. Letters were sampled randomly by the computer according to their frequency of appearance in the Hebrew Jewish Bible. Out of the generated sets, the computer picked up those which had numerical values aligning on a straight line and that allowed the professor to accurately estimate the probability of having a set of words aligning on a straight line by chance. Here is a summary table for a sample of Professor Shore's studies. So, the Big Bang matches the Torah, Yerech, Moon, Eretz, Earth, and Shemesh, Sun, match NASA scientific data, both for size and mass, and also Yom, Day, Yerech, Month, and Shana, Year, match the scientific data of the time frequencies, and all scientific data by NASA for all planets in our solar system match the HNV values of the words. 
for the size, the mass, and the orbital angular momentum, and the secret of the speeds of light and sound match the HNV of Or and Kohl, light and sound, and Keshet and Ra'am, rainbow and thunder, and the names for colors in the Jewish Torah have the wave frequencies embedded within the HNV values of the words, and water's specific heat capacity is found in HNV values of the words depicting the three phases of water, and the metals and the chemicals mentioned in the Jewish Torah have HNV values corresponding to the atomic weights of the substances that they represent. Each of these matches has a very important and significant meaning on its own. But what is the probability of getting all of these matches coincidentally? The answer, this probability is virtually non-existent. There is zero probability of getting all these results by chance. Now let us understand one very important thing. There is a deeper meaning emerging in front of our eyes. Know therefore this day, and think in thy heart, that the Lord, He is God in heaven above and in the earth beneath, and there is no other. Deuteronomy 4, 39.